Hey, security researcher here once again. Thanks for checking out this video. Let me ask you something. Ever find yourself chatting with somebody about something totally mundane like planning a camping trip and then out of nowhere ads for camping gear start popping up everywhere? You haven't searched for it, you haven't posted about it, yet there it is, tents, sleeping bags, and all the essentials you didn't even know you needed. We've all kind of suspected for a while now that our devices might be listening to us, but we've been told time and time again that that's just crazy talk. But what if I told you you're not actually wrong? Would you be interested in finding out how it all works? In this video, I'll break it down in plain English so we can all have a better understanding of how our devices are being used without our knowledge or understanding. By the end, I promise you're going to have a clearer picture of how your technology is being used against you than you ever did before. We're going to cover who's doing it, why it's happening, how they do it, and most importantly, what it means for you and I. Let's dive right in. Who's behind this massive data gathering operation? It's a mix of big tech companies, advertising firms, data brokers, and even governments. These companies don't just offer us services, they're also in the business of collecting vast amounts of data on our habits, interests, and behaviors. But it's not just them. Marketing firms and data brokers buy and sell this information, often without us knowing about it. They create detailed profiles on millions and millions of people, which are then sold to whoever wants to pay for that information. Whether it's advertisers looking to target you with personal ads, political groups aiming to sway your opinions, or even government agencies monitoring your activities for various reasons. So why is it all happening? The answer is pretty simple. Profit. Data is incredibly valuable in today's economy. The more companies know about you, the more accurately they can target ads, and the more they can charge for those ads. It's a billion dollar industry built on the back of our personal information. But it's not just about advertising. There's a whole ecosystem dedicated to collecting, analyzing, and selling data. This ecosystem thrives on our ignorance. Most people don't fully understand how much data is being collected or how it's being used. And that's no accident. The tech industry has a vested interest in keeping us in the dark. The less we know, the less we're able to protect our privacy, and the more valuable our data becomes. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of how they do it. The answer lies in a web of tracking technologies that know more about our lives than you might think possible. Take our smartphones and tablets, for example. They're loaded with apps that constantly monitor what we do, every tap, swipe, search. Our computers are no different. Websites use cookies and scripts to track our browsing habits, building detailed profiles based on the websites we visit, the content we consume, and even the things we click on. It doesn't stop at traditional devices. Smart TVs and streaming devices don't just show us our favorite shows. They track what we watch and when we watch it. Our smartwatches and fitness trackers monitor our physical activity, heart rate, and even sleep patterns. Digital assistants like Siri and Alexa are always listening, recording our voice commands and potentially other conversations as well. And then there's the smart home gadgets, everything from smart thermostats to security cameras. Even the modern car, it's all part of this network, with built-in sensors and connectivity features that track our driving habits, locations, sometimes even record the conversations we have through our onboard microphones. Speaking of smart devices, have you ever wondered what smart actually stands for? We hear the term all the time, smartphones, smart watches, and all these other gadgets. But if we're honest, the tech industry hasn't been upfront about what it means. Smart stands for self-monitoring and reporting technology. But here's the thing, when we talk about smart devices, we're also referring to surveillance marketed as a revolutionary technology. These gadgets are designed not just to provide convenience or entertainment, but also to collect data about our habits, preferences, and routines. They're not just there to make our lives easier. They're also busy collecting data on our activities, locations, and interactions. It's like having a little surveillance drone that you carry around with you, quietly reporting back a surprisingly detailed picture of your life to various services and apps without you even realizing it. You might think, well, I'll just opt out of all this tracking. But here's the catch. Opting out isn't as straightforward or effective as it sounds. Many apps and devices bury their data collection practices in lengthy terms of service agreements, making it hard to find and understand how to opt out. Even when you do manage to opt out, the tracking often continues in more subtle ways. Some services use techniques like browser fingerprinting or device recognition to keep tabs on you without using traditional cookies. Essentially, these methods create a unique profile based on your device's characteristics and online behavior, making it nearly impossible to fully escape their watchful eyes. But here's the kicker. Even if you think you're protecting your privacy with tools like VPNs or encrypted apps, it's often not enough. 
VPNs encrypt the traffic you send and receive, but if the device itself is compromised, none of that matters. AdTech can access data directly from the device through its microphones, cameras, screen captures, and even by logging keystrokes. This means they can bypass any external security measures and gather data straight from the device. So while these smart devices seem revolutionary, they're also a sophisticated system designed to monitor and report on everything you do, creating a comprehensive digital footprint of your everyday life. The technology that makes our lives so convenient is the same technology that scrutinizes every detail of it. So what does it mean for us? Well, it means that every aspect of our lives is being monitored, analyzed, and potentially sold without our explicit consent. It's a level of surveillance that's pervasive and deeply embedded in the technology that we use every day. By simply using these devices, we've become part of a massive consumer surveillance system. The implications are far-reaching, beyond just the obvious privacy concerns. There are significant risks involved. Our personal information could be used for identity theft, financial fraud, blackmail, and reputational damage. But the concerns go way deeper than that, particularly when we consider the potential for misuse by other state actors. For example, apps like TikTok, which collect vast amounts of user data, pose a significant risk when operated by companies based in or influenced by foreign governments. The data collected can be used to track our behavior, influence our opinions, and even manipulate public sentiment. This isn't a privacy issue, it's a matter of national security. Imagine a hostile near-peer state actor gaining access to all of this data. They could use it to influence elections, manipulate public opinion, or launch disinformation campaigns with terrifying precision. They can understand societal trends, identify and target influential individuals, and even predict public responses to events. It's like handing over a blueprint of our society, complete with detailed information about each individual, in order to make societal manipulation that much easier. For those in power or influence, the stakes are incredibly high. The detailed data profiles that these systems can generate are not just marketing tools. They could be used to undermine political stability, compromise sensitive information, or destabilize economies. It's a reality that we need to wake up to. The first step is awareness. Recognize the extent to which your devices and the technologies we interact with are monitoring and collecting our data. Be mindful of the permissions that you're granting and the information that you're sharing. It's time to take control of your digital life. Be critical of the technology you use, the apps you download, and the platforms you engage with. Consider alternative tools that prioritize privacy and security. And most importantly, stay informed. Because the more you know, the better equipped you are to protect yourself in this age of pervasive surveillance. Remember, in the world of ad tech and consumer surveillance, you're not just a user, you're the product. And it's up to you to decide how much of yourself you're willing to give away. Now let's talk about practical steps to help you take control of your digital life and protect your privacy. Start with a basic rule. Be skeptical of the technology around you. Don't just accept tools and apps at face value. Every gadget and app you use is a potential gateway for data collection. Remember, technology often distracts you from the fact that you're the real target. Push for better practices from tech companies and governments. Question what you're really agreeing to when you click accept. When it comes to app permissions, less is more. Does your flashlight app really need access to your contacts or locations? Be selective about the permissions you grant. If an app is asking too much, it's probably best to just steer clear of it. Install only the apps you need and trust. Avoid those that seem sketchy or ask for permissions that aren't necessary. Opt for open source and privacy focused alternatives which offer greater transparency about their data practices. Privacy focused operating systems like Graphene and Lineage are excellent choices because they're built with security and privacy in mind. Graphene is built with serious protections in mind using tough security features like hardened memory allocation and clever exploit mitigation to guard against a whole range of threats. Plus it gives you detailed control over which apps can access your data so that you can fine tune your privacy just the way you want. On the flip side, Lineage offers a sleek, customizable experience without all the annoying bloatware you find on standard Android versions. It lets you decide what apps and services run on your device, which helps to cut down on unnecessary data collection and boost your security. And here's the kicker, both of these operating systems are open source. That means anyone can look at their source code and check for hidden backdoors and sneaky malware. It's kind of like having a security team constantly vetting your software. Another smart move is to isolate sensitive work. Use separate devices for personal and work-related tasks. Don't mix personal apps with work devices. This simple step alone can help to compartmentalize your data and reduce risk. Network isolation is equally important. Set up different networks for different purposes. A secure network for work and another for personal use. 
Also, disable the Wi-Fi Auto Connect feature to keep your devices from linking to unfamiliar networks. When it comes to security, regular audits and strong encryption are your best friends. Regularly review and update your security practices and tools. Apply robust encryption methods to keep your communications and data storage secure. Educating yourself and others about digital security is crucial. Stay informed about the latest threats and best practices. If you're part of an organization, implement strict data governance policies and regular training to ensure that everybody's up to speed. For those ultra-sensitive situations, consider using hardware security measures like advanced Faraday enclosures. Privacy Research Inc. offers the gold standard in advanced Faraday solutions. Their laboratory certified effectiveness in signals isolation and proven EMP protection is known by militaries and governments around the world. Meanwhile, the Ridge Wallet is the best when it comes to protecting your credit cards. Its sleek design and RFID blocking technology ensure that your cards are safe from skimming and unauthorized access. My team's tested both of these products, and they really are the best out there. Be proactive when it comes to privacy legislation. Demand stronger privacy laws and push for transparency from companies about their data collection practices. Advocate for simpler, more understandable terms of service agreements so you know exactly what you're signing up for. Reduce your digital footprint by being mindful of what you share online. Make sure you go back through and delete accounts that you no longer use. When it comes to QR codes, adjust your phone setting to prevent automatic recognition. Request physical alternatives to QR codes whenever possible to minimize your exposure to potential threats. If you're in a restaurant and they only offer menus if you scan a QR code, go somewhere else. Every time you choose the lazy way out, the less choice you're going to have going forward in the future. People behind pushing the adoption of all of this are counting on that. The more we let technology set the rules for our digital lives, the more we lose control over our privacy, our choices, and our freedoms in the real world. Power to protect yourself and determine what the future looks like is entirely in your hands. Please don't let it slip away.